This fact was prepared to the Linear and Switching Circuits Unit of the Electronics Combined Framework at Bournemouth University. It's a brief introduction to the important topic of CMOS circuits and links the linear devices and circuits we've been studying in this part of the unit to the large world of digital electronic design. As well as an introduction, we'll also look briefly at the advantages of CMOS which have fueled the explosion of complex products based on cheap and powerful electronic integrated circuits. And finally, we'll look at how simple static logic functions can be built up in CMOS. Metal oxide MOS field effect transistors are made in depletion mode like junction FETs or enhancement mode as shown here and with either N or P type channels we'll look at the N type devices first. These have two highly doped N type regions for the source and drain contacts and a block of P type silicon. A layer of insulating silicon dioxide covers the channel between these contacts and finally a metal or conducting polysilicon layer is formed over the channel as the gate contact. The transistor can operate as a linear amplifier or as a digital switch. If a positive voltage difference is applied between the drain and the source, no current can flow. However, if a positive voltage is applied to the gate, this will attract electrons from the highly doped source and drain regions along with minority carriers from the substrate. These will form a thin layer under the gate which is now acting as a charged up capacitor. This layer will form an n-type channel of electrons linking the electrons in the source and the drain. An electron current can then flow up from the source to the drain under the applied potential difference, forming a conventional current flow flowing from the drain down to the source. The size of the current is controlled by the available electrons in the channel, which is in turn determined by the voltage the attracting field applied to the gate. So we have a linear device with an output drain current controlled by the input gate voltage. It's a field effect metal oxide transistor made from layers of metal, oxide and semiconductor or MOSFET. As a digital device it acts simply as a switch. With a low or negative voltage or digital zero on the gate it won't conduct. But with a positive voltage or digital one applied to the gate it will conduct connecting the drain to the source. With a naught on the gate the switch is open and with a one on the gate the switch is closed. The P-channel transistor is similar in construction and operation except that the source and drain are now P-type silicon with positively charged holes as the majority charge carriers sitting in a well of N-type silicon. The drain is biased with a low or negative voltage and applying a low or negative voltage to the gate will attract holes to form a P-type channel which can carry the current from source to drain. As a digital device it acts again simply as a switch. The symbol shows the not circle here to indicate that a low voltage or a digital zero will turn the device on and connect the drain to the source. This slide compares three different fabrication technologies to build an inverter or not gate. The bipolar NPN transistor will conduct the high voltage or a one on the base causing a collector current to flow down through the resistor and dropping the voltage on the up down to a low level or digital zero. The NMOS operation is similar except that as an integrated device it's easier to make the resistor out of an NMOS transistor as shown here. The CMOS works because a high level input will turn on the NMOS transistor connecting the output to ground or digital zero while a low level input will turn on the PMOS transistor connecting the output to the positive rail or digital one level. The BJT is the fastest of the three, followed by the NMOS circuit, but power consumptions are in the reverse order. The CMOS advantage is that it doesn't consume power while in a steady state on or off, as one of the transistors will always be switched off and no current will flow to dissipate energy. This is very significant if you want to make complex electronic circuits with millions of transistors crammed into a tiny chip space of a few millimeters per side. There will be energy dissipated on changing the state, that's a fundamental law of physics, we can certainly make a vast improvement in power consumption over bipolar or NMOS devices by using CMOS. It is this energy efficiency of CMOS, along with its ease of construction on very high density integrated circuits, that has largely powered the electronic revolution. This slide shows the principle behind one means of building static logic circuits using CMOS. The circuit is split into two complementary halves. The top bit is made of PMOS transistors 
and its job is to connect the output up to the positive supply rail to give a logic high output when the inputs are in the required combination. The bottom bit is made up from NMOS transistors. Its job is to pull the output down to the negative supply rail to give a logic low when the inputs are in the required combination. So the pull-up network takes care of the one outputs, while the pull-down network takes care of the zeros. To do this without overlap requires that the top circuit is complementary to the bottom circuit, as we shall see in the following slides. To make a two-input NOR gate, we have to implement this truth table. Here's the circuit. Let's first see how it handles the zeros in the table with the pull-down network. QN1 and QN2 are NMOS pull-down transistors. If A is 1, it will turn on QN1 and connect the output to 0. And if B is 1, it will turn on QN2 and again connect the output to 0. And so the output is 0 if either A or B is 1, which is our required function. Looking next at the 1s with the pull-up circuit, QP1 and QP2 are PMOS pull-up transistors. For the output to be connected to 1, both A must be 0 to turn on QP1 and B must be 0 to turn on QP2. Hence, we have the required function that both A and B have to be 0 for the output to be 1. Notice also here that the pull-up and pull-down networks are complementary. The pull-down transistors are in parallel for the NOT OR function, while the pull-up transistors are in series for the AND NOT and B NOT function. We can verify this operation using the Boolean equations for both networks. The pull-down has Y low or Y not for either A or B high. We can invert that to get not brackets A or B, which is the required NOR function. The pull-up has inverted inputs for A and B, so that Y is equal to not A and not B. We can rewrite this as Y not equals A and B, which is the result we obtain for the pull-down. And again, which translates into the overall NOR function. Here's the corresponding NAND gate. Try and check out the operation of the pull-up and pull-down networks. This is a slightly more complicated example, part of Doctor Who's gerbil disintegrator maybe. Looking at the pull-down network first, we see that the output will be zero, or not Y, if C is 1, or if both A and B are 1. Inverting that expression, we can obtain the function that Y is equal to not brackets A and B or C. Checking the pull-up network gives that Y is 1 if not C is 1, and either not A or not B are 1. And inverting that, we get not Y as C or A and B, which inverts again to give the same function as the pull-down. This is the truth table to check out the previous example. The zeros from the pull-down network, the ones from the pull-up network, again notice the complementary arrangements of the pull-up and pull-down transistors. Finally, this is the check slide. Hopefully you should now be able to make some sort of case for the success of CMOS in modern electronics-based products. And you should also be able to identify static logic functions, such as the one shown here for you to try. Thank you.